alcohol, uh, taking alcohol or wine or other intoxicating drinks. I come to talk about this with a humble heart. It is one thing that um, changed my life. I was in a bondage of that. That what had bound my life. Uh, but I bless the Lord because it is He who sets people free. The other thing that really humbles me is that the Bible says a lot of things about alcohol. We will try to look at it all. And we'll try to put it in our particular context. Um, uh, one of the things that the Bible talks about this, our theme. There are times you'll find the Bible talking about alcohol in a positive manner. Uh, and there are other times the Bible will talk about it and it will say that uh, actually flee from alcohol. We shall look at both sides. And then we shall bring it to a particular context and see what it implies. The first place where we find the word alcohol in the Bible it is in the book of Genesis chapter 9 verse 20 to 25. Uh, we are going to talk about so many scriptures. And all the scriptures are mentioned in the notes that were given to you. Some we are going to read them and others we won't because of time. But I beseech you that you take off some time and read through those scriptures that were given to you. And therefore the first place that that we see about alcohol in Genesis chapter 9 um, chapter 9 and then again in Genesis chapter 9 the, the sad thing about it is that even the first experience of alcohol in the Bible it wasn't nice uh, the man called Noah when he got out of the ark after the Lord has had uh, um, destroyed the earth with a flood, he began to work the land and planted vines. And then that after that, he took the, uh, the wine that came from the vines. Uh, but it seems that uh, he's um, his descendant. Uh, because what happened to him is actually what would happen to me whenever I would get drunk. Because the Bible says that he got drunk. And then he did not just stop at getting drunk. He undressed. And then his son came in and found him naked. And then the siblings of that boy went in and went to hide the nakedness of their father. Uh, uh, after, after the wine had gotten out of him, after his he got to learn of what had happened. And what came out of his mouth wasn't nice. Because he cast the son that is called Canaan. The first, therefore, the first experience of alcohol was nice. When you go to the second experience uh, in uh, Genesis chapter 19, uh, after Lot and his uh, children, his daughters had survived the, the uh, destruction in Sodom. Their mom had become a pillar of salt. Then what followed? These kids had counsel. And they wondered where are we going to get men from? Who is going to continue our lineage? That they made their dad drunk. 
that the first daughter slept with the dad. And the father didn't get to know what happened. And he arose and then he thought life was normal. Uh, he didn't know that he had committed one of the sins that we learned of here. Or because of committing incest. And uh, then the following day, the second daughter also said that I also have to sleep with him. They made him drunk again. And then Lord, he slept with his younger daughter. What came forth, it also wasn't nice. Two, two tribes came out of those people that were born. One was the Moabites. Others were the more nights. Uh, those are a, a, a result of what alcohol had done. Uh, let us keep, uh, let's move first to the, what we would say is positive, that the Bible calls positive about alcohol. Uh, the first thing that the Bible mentions is that it makes glad the hearts of men. Because that is what the Bible says in Psalms 101. That he, he gives wine, uh, wine that makes glad the hearts of men and oil that makes the skin shine and bread that fills the, the stomach. The context of this scripture, they thank the Lord for what he does. They, they mention how he makes the vegetation to grow. How God gives food to the different people. But of the things that they mention, they talk about wine that makes glad the hearts of men. The other thing that the Bible says that is crucial is that wine made one of, was one of the offerings that would be offered in the, um, in the offerings in the old days. There are several scriptures that I will not read. Um, there are uh, the Bible says that of all the offering that is given, you should include a liter of, of wine in the offering. So wine was part of the things that were included in the offering. When we get into the New Testament, we, we see that Jesus made a miracle where he brought wine in the wedding at Canaan. That is a, script, a, 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 a scripture that is in John that I will not dwell on. Uh, the other thing is that when Jesus was about to go back to heaven, uh, before he went to uh, the cross, uh, of the many words that he spoke, to his disciples, this was also included. Uh, he said that I tell you truly that I will not partake of the fruit of the of vines. The beginning today till when I will share with you in the kingdom of my father. When you, uh, you put that together with what the Bible says in Isaiah where, where they talk about uh, the big day uh, that the Lord is preparing for all the nations, all these people. One of the things that the, bio, uh, that the Lord will serve to his people on that feast 
there is wine that is included waja muri timoteo aho benshi banwe nzoga uyu murongo bashobora kutamenya ndi yose muri bibiri ari kuyungu yo barawumenya when you go to timothy where there is a verse that uh, all people that take alcohol or take wine uh, use uh, they may fail to know other uh, scriptures but this particular one they know Timoteo it Timoteo ambere gice cyagatano murongo wa 23 uh, is first Timothy chapter 1 verse 23 Aho Paulo yabwiraga Timoteo ngo where Paul told Timothy Uhereye none reka kunywa amazi gusa ahubwo umwe vino nke kubwinda yawe kukurwaragurika uh, say that from today do not just take water but consume a little wine because it is good for your stomach when you read this scripture it's like Timothy had decided not to take alcohol and or wine. But you see again in that particular scripture, Paul says that leaders ought not to take wine. Anyuma. Timoteo wakagira ikibazo cyo kurwaragurika. But Timothy had a problem with his health. Anyuma Paul aravuga ati rero urekera aho kunywa amazi gusa. And then Paul told him that stop taking only water. Ahubwo umwe na vino ari kunywe nke. That a little wine is good for your stomach. Kuko tubatuzi ibindi ari kwiyonke nta nubwo abantu banayisoma. Uh, but you see people don't read that part that says little wine. Kuko nke ishobora kuvuga umubare wa makazie kugiha abandi bivuga umubare w'ikirahure kimwe ashobora kuba yanweye because a wine can a little can be interpreted in several ways it could mean a whole a crate of alcohol but it could also mean just a glass ndangirije aha buri wese atahavuga ati bibiliya rwose ishyigikira kunwe inzoga if i stopped here everyone people would go back thinking that the bible approves of a uh, uh, consumption of wine. But that is not the whole truth. When you read other scriptures, uh, the Bible says that the wine is something that you need to be careful of. Uh, in Proverbs chapter 20, verse 1, uh, the Bible says that wine is wine is a mocha and it is raging and those that drink it lack wisdom. And when you also go to the book of Proverbs chapter 23 verse 20 to verse 20 21. 20 uh, the Bible tells people not to be in company of gluttons and wine uh, takers because uh, it is not, they shouldn't be in the company of gluttons. Because when you take alcohol, considering the scriptures that we've just read, first of all, if you take wine, you lack wisdom. And then the Bible also continues to say that them that sit in the council of wine takers and gluttons shall become poor. But particularly there is a group of people that the Bible tells that even if other people take it, you should not take it. The first people that are told that instruction is the other priests. Let us read in Leviticus chapter 8. In Leviticus chapter 10, verse 8 to 11, the Bible says that then the Lord spoke to Aaron, saying, Do not drink wine or intoxicating drink. You know your sons with you when you go into the tabernacle of meeting, lest you die. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations, that you may distinguish 
distinguish between holy and unholy, and between unclean and clean, and that you may teach the children of Israel all the statutes which the Lord has spoken to them by the hand of Moses. One thing that amazes me in this particular scripture, it is the context in which it is spoken. When you read this uh, scripture, uh, there, are two, uh, there are two um, sons of Aaron that had been killed uh, before the Lord. Because they had come to give an offering using an uncommon fire, strange fire. Uh, when um, God had warned uh, Aaron, uh, um, then um, God told Aaron that do not take wine or intoxicating drink that you may be able to distinguish between holy and unholy. One thing that I see in this and I also think applies to my experience. Inzoga ifitukwihindura the wine corrupts your ability to make judgments. That, that is why now they even arrest people that drink, uh, that drive while they are drunk. Actually, they did not arrest the, uh, the drunk that are driving, but those that took alcohol and are driving. Because it corrupts the mind of a human being. So this thing, this is one thing that we need to consider carefully. If we are a, a royal priesthood like the Bible calls us. The second category of people are the Nazarites. People that have been set apart for the Lord. Those that have been set apart for a particular purpose. In, in Numbers chapter 6 verse 1. Please allow me not, uh, that we may not read it but I will tell you what's there. They, that scripture just does not stop Nazareth from taking alcohol. They would stop them from taking anything that comes out of vines. Even taking the fruit from vines. When you think about it, you wonder why they were given such stringent uh, But when you go back in, the, in that context when there were no fridges and other preserving um, technologies, any juice that is kept for a long time at some point becomes alcohol. I know this because I grew up in a village. After I had stopped taking alcohol, I went back to preach in the, in the tribe. I, I went with a teacher that hadn't grown up there. When they were welcoming us and they were going to offer us a drink, they gave us a juice called Riyaza. When I took a sip of it, I felt that it had already converted to alcohol, like a person that was experienced at it. Uh, because out of respect, they would give it to me and it to uh, The teacher that I went with... Uh, because it was kind of sweet that someone could follow the sweetness. <laughs> we took that and then after he went home. The, the following day he came and told me, you guys are not good. I asked him what happened. He told me that the bed was moving the whole night. Uh, and the person who helped him was actually his mate. Uh, he would sleep and feel that the bed was moving and then he would fall. 
wahindutse inzoga uh, but it came from the juice that Abana had turned into rero, alcohol abana ziri rero bo bari ngo nimbuto zava mu inzoga mwe ni mukarebeho so the nazarites had been told that actually even fruits that come from vines you should not eat nabami the, the third kind of people are the kings abami nabo bibiliya mu migani 31 kane kugera kuri gatanu haravuga ngo ntibikwiri abami ruweriwe ru remuweriwe abami ndi bakwiriye kunywa vino cyangwa ibikomango makubaririza ibisindishaho biri be kunywa bakagirwa ibya bakibagirwa ibyategetswe bakagoreka imanza z'abarenga uh, the bible says in proverbs chapter 31 uh, from verse 4 to 5 yeah uh -huh. yes okay it is not for kings or them well it is not for kings to drink wine nor for princess in intoxicating drink lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the justice of all uh, the afflicted you know there is no one that the bible forbids from uh, taking alcohol and does not give uh, a bibo barabwiwe ngo igituma badakwiye kunywa no kugira ngo bashobore gutanga imanza zitabera the kings were stopped or were forbidden from taking alcohol because they had to make just judgments abakora mu bucamanza bambabarire uh, judges that are here, please bear with me. Ariko ntabwo wa wa kumva umubare w'imanza cyangwa ibintu bibi bicurirwa mu kabari. But you cannot you would not understand the number of uh, cases that come up in 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 bars. Abantu barenganirizwa mu kabari. People that suffer injustice in the bar. Kubera gusako hari umuntu wanweye hanyuma arangije agoreka because of one person that took alcohol and then they perverted things because they drank. Uh, uh, I cannot fail to read for you verse 6 and 7 that give strong drink to him who is perishing and wine to those who are bitter of heart. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. Uh, you see the Bible is, is kind of mocking them. That, that evening you'll have forgotten. But the following day, you find your problem more grown. Because you only try to overlook it for a short time. Because I'm telling you this out of experience. Because this is my personal experience, but also of those that I meet every day. The Bible forbids and openly condemns um, drunkenness. See what Isaiah chapter 5 says. And they would have Yes. yes, Isaiah chapter 5, 11. Verse 11 says, uh, Verse 11 says that, Woe to those who rise early in the morning, that they may follow intoxicating drink, who continue until night, till wine inflames them. The sharp the harp and the strings, the tambourine and flute, um, and wine are in their fists, but they do not regard the work of the Lord, nor consider the operation of his hand. When you get into the New Testament, the Bible says it more openly. 
the Bible openly says that do not be drunk in wine but in the Holy Ghost. When you go to First Peter chapter 4 verse 3, uh, uh, First Peter chapter 4 verse 3 um, says, For we have spent enough of our, ta our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles, when we walked in lordness, lust, drunkenness, reveries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. In regard to this, they think it strange that they do not run with them in the same flood of dispersion, speaking evil of you. Ichimbi chinhangaza, nukubu sinzi, bibiria ibushira murizi mne mumbuto za kamere, changwa se mumirimo ya kamere. Thing, the other thing that surprises me is that drunkenness is considered one of the fruits of the carnal nature in Proverbs chapter 5. Uh, the other thing that the Bible mentions is that while you choose a leader, they should not be lovers of alcohol and they should not be drunkards. Um, what conclusion can we draw after seeing both sides of this? Uh, the, the, one thing that is clear is that the Bible does not uh, permit us to take alcohol. It does not... Uh, Give us a go ahead, does not push us to take Na, alcohol. Nanu gitu girango, itchi nu chakora yeruraho niche kurhand. Iravugangu busin zibgo actuari nicha. Uh, but one thing it clearly states is that drunkenness is sin. Ben Shredo Bakavugabati, Jewen Zangwa, Ariko Sinza sinned. Uh, some people say that um, I will drink, but I will not get drunk. But is that possible? Especially in our Rwandan culture. Because when you go into the Rwandan culture, you find that drinking and getting drunk are two things that go together. Uh, I'm not going to teach you culture, but one thing that I know is this. Uh, if you take an example of a wedding, and you find the different rituals that would take place in a Rwandan wedding, you wonder if people loved each other that much that they would have weddings that would last much. But you'll find that there is one thing that underlies it all, and that is alcohol. Alcohol. We came to ask for a bride, uh, it's, uh, alcohol. We came to ask for her hand in marriage, it's we came to give bride price and that is alcohol. We came to fasten the ceremonies and that is alcohol. We have a wedding that is alcohol again. Um, the, uh, the first and thing. all other rituals that go with it is uh, alcohol why am I saying all this? Nuko experience no yan have gondi mukuruchan and fite, nuko na gonda wonu munyarwandu one has seen. Uh is that is because that in my little experience is that I've not seen any random that drinks and doesn't get drunk. This is not the Bible saying this, it is me as Lambert saying that. Uh, there are my my brethren that are Christians but they are also civilized that take alcohol. They say that we do not go to a bar, we drink from home. And then you visit them. And they bring the first bottle of wine. They bring the second one. They bring the third one. Uh, but you keep wondering, are these the people that say that they are able to control this? What am I saying here is this. If you do not drink alcohol, the counsel that I would give you basing on what you've just read, please don't start on it. Don't start 
because if you open that door and enlarge that boundary you have no idea of how much more the devil will bring the second thing if you drink alcohol, I'm not judging you, but I would advise you, take it before the Lord, uh, and ask him that of oh, these things that I do, are you pleased with it? Are you pleased with this? There is a scripture that I put in in the conclusion. The Bible says that all is permissible, but not all is beneficial. Indeed, um, all is permissible, but not all is beneficial for us. That you should not just be self-conscious, but also care about other people. Mm. Uh, the Bible says in Romans that you should be careful that you may not stumble, make stumble that person that Jesus redeemed with his blood uh, through your drinking of alcohol. May the Lord help us to hear what he's telling us this morning. Nichuri kutubgira, nichuri kufugana, numutima abriwe se wicha ya hanga. Mungami reki jambo diyawe, abari wawuri sovanura, de kabari wawwe ujenda, uvugi mumitima yachu, kurushibji mungana umunu ya vug. Turifuza kuba, ubgoko bukuba ha, turifuza kuba, ubgoko bujenda na nawe, turifuza kutabi korera, kubgogu himana, changwa sekwere kanako dushroboye, ariku ibyo dukora, tukabikora kubgawe kuko ijambo ryawe riratubwira ngo ubwami bwawe subwo kurya sinubwo kunwa ngo ahubwo nubwi imbaraga ndetse no mwuka wera mwuka wera rero reka wiyoborera abantu bawe ubamenyesha icyo uri kuvuga mu mitima yabo muri iki gihe icyubahiro kibi cyawe ubwami bwawe buze mu izina rya Yesu amen imana ibahumishe